So thanks everyone for coming here today for uh, Angeliki's uh, talk and her exhibition. Angeliki was here at Thinker Maker Space for a two month residency. She extended it uh, for, I don't know, four months almost. Uh, today you will have to, the chance to be introduced to her work, but also the work that she produced during her residency at Thinker Maker Space. Uh, for those of you uh, come here for the first time, Thinker Makerspace is a multifunctional creative space uh, which is uh, combined by four main areas. We're now at the digital fabrication workshop. Uh, whatever you see around 3D printers, equipment, um, the, the tables that you see uh, are all available for booking. So if you become members, you can use the facilities through our platform. Um, Currently, membership is for free, and uh, there will be few charges in the future. We also have a media desk at the back of the corridor where you can find equipment for documentation. We also have a photo studio. Uh, again, all the equipment there is available for booking, but also for lending. And so, for example, if you want to book a camera to take somewhere home to, to, to use for a couple of days and then bring it back, uh, this is also an option. And lastly, we also have a wooden metal workshop on the other side uh, of the street, uh, which has more traditional uh, tools like lathe, um, wheels, and so on. We are expecting also a CNC machine. We also have an electronics, and we're uh, expanding further our lab. Uh, one of the projects that we do is the artist residency, uh, which uh, Angeligi was part of. And uh, we give access to artists to experiment on a specific project using the facilities uh, of our equipment. And now Angeliki can uh, present her work and tell you a few things about what she has done here. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Uh, so, yeah, for those who don't know me, I'm an architect and visual designer. And uh, I, I'm going to say a few things about my practice and then I'm going to explain a bit of the uh, theoretical research that I did and how I ended up to this exhibition. Because I was looking to find uh, new kinds of spaces that I didn't know how and why. So I had the opportunity to work with many teams that um, organizing events. So basically those 3D images were uh, used as a uh, party graphics, but it was a good way for me to let go of the responsibilities and explore something. So, for example, okay, this is something recent, not uh, from 13 years ago. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, so um, these were kind of exercises. And um, I had uh, found some notes in my notebook saying that uh, when my computer lags, my blood pressure goes up, or I miss my friends who don't have uh, Wi-Fi at home. Mm -hmm. So I started, and I started understanding how physical and digital space are like two things that are very interconnected. And um, yeah, <laughs> oops. And um, so, one second, so these are some of my explorations and uh, I also experimented a lot with visual projections and uh, I, I really tried to connect the, um, the two spaces together because I found it as the ultimate way to, to prove that they are one, let's say. <laughs> so this is an installation that uh, Eleonora Antoniadu designed and, and there was a performance going on that I had some projections on. And, um, okay, so um, then uh, continuing with this, I started uh, thinking uh, what space means as an entity and what is the space that eventually reaches our receptors uh, or what we sense. And at the end, what is the, the abstraction of space that we finally perceive? So there are two uh, very different things. And um, when I was in Berlin, uh, in uh, Weissensee Kunsthochschule, I started uh, <laughs> 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 
I will show you two of my projects that uh, were dealing with abstractions of space. So that one was uh, uh, was called Mental Matter, and it was a set of tableware uh, objects that uh, someone could use to eat or drink, but at the same time uh, to construct situa uh, compositions in order to um, explain something to the, to the other person. For example, uh, let's say you have an accident with your bike and you want to explain how it happened and you, you look on uh, things on the table to, to show how, how this happened. So I made this to help out those situations. Uh, so this is a, an abstraction of space, let's say. And um, uh, yeah, here was, it was exhibited in a uh, uh, museum in Dresden. Anyway, <laughs> so another project that I did uh, with porcelain, this was actually the first project that I did with porcelain. When I, I realized that porcel glazed porcelain, shiny porcelain, is a material that takes me back to the rendered world, and I found it as a way to connect physical and virtual, um, yeah, through the material. So that, that project was called Dream Coder, and uh, it was a set of um, porcelain creatures uh, that were produced by hand gestures, so it could feel pleasant for your hand as well. So the initial idea was that um, when you wake up in the morning, when you have a dream in your head, you have it by your bed and you start constructing uh, the situation that you dreamed of. So you uh, lock the dream to your conscious part so that you remember it afterwards. So it's a, a small ritual in the morning with this uh, dreamy material. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, then, um, I wanted to uh, examine more how, how would do we perceive space, how the processes work uh, in our brain in order to find out how we can twist or distort them in order to broaden our spatial percep perception and to grasp more of what exists in the world. Um, so, um, one second. <laughs> um, one of the things that we're going to discuss today is uh, that subcategorizing space as, let's say, virtual, physical, uh, digital, or whatever, it's, it's a construct and it, there is no such thing. <laughs> so um, I believe that those two or the, all those separations um, they all exist in the same sphere. And the foundation of that uh, statement uh, has been the essay of the German philosopher Wilhelm Flusser, uh, the essay called Spaces, uh, who describe, um, describes the development of spatial perception throughout human history. So he states that in the past, we were thinking that space was a solid thing and that time was a current going through it. And that uh, slowly, like in steps, we, we tend to break this perception and we, to grasp more. So there is an interesting quote in, from his essay in my own translation <laughs> in English because it, it was in German, so I, I hope I made it well. So he says that um, this new space that we experience now and nowadays can no longer be a low box sitting on the floor and through which time blows towards the future. Rather, this space has to be a bubble that, that stretches out in the future and um, it cannot be a scaffold within which life occurs, uh, not also a skeleton upon which life rests, uh, so as not to melt, but it has to be a living skin that absorbs information, stores it, processes it, to pass it on. So um, he states that uh, space is a multi-diverse entity that encloses all kinds of data, so physical and virtual uh, are in the same sphere. <coughs> and he uh, explains that um, we have passed from when space was uh, separated into hunting and digestive and um, reproductive space 
to the collecting and sitting and waiting space, to public and private space. And now we are into the invasion of cosmos and virtual space into the living space. Um, and that happened since we started uh, calculating space through algorithms, because words fail to describe this uh, multi-dimensional thing. And I also now struggle to <laughs> describe it. <laughs> so um, after that research, I'm going to show you an installation that I have done. And it was also presented here in WIP Festival in October. And then I'm going to explain a bit how this happened. And we can go to see. <laughs> so that, um, this installation is called Thinking of Space, <laughs> obviously. And um, so it, doing this, I realized that in order to break perception and to, to realize all those things that are happening, we have to um, break the automated perceptions that we have. So here I try to blend many architectural scales together. Uh, so to break our expectation, let's say um, you go through those stairs over there and your mind makes uh, the thought that the human is somewhere here climbing up the stairs and then it hits a wall that is uh, a different, other, a whole other scale. And here you see a door that is also not matching the same scale. So this breaking of perception, of expectation, it broadens our perception to grasp more, to understand that it's not what, what we think it is. And um, so furthermore, I, I blended uh, physical and virtual. So having um, in front of this uh, porcelain model, I made the walk-in 3D animation of the same space, but coming into, let's say, one-to-one -one scale. And then you could uh, walk in and trying to uh, starting to blend the scales again. OK, so here are some images from the exhibition in Berlin. This was a creature that maybe it's supposed to be the inhabitant of that space, but maybe not. <laughs> And you can see it also in the animation. OK. And here we come to now. Uh, so in my current experimentation in, in Thinker Maker Space, I attempted to continue that research of breaking expectation and to broaden perception, but in terms of material. So I wanted to, of course, I used porcelain again, but I also tried to use more materials that makes these uh, borders blur. And um, I use the space here. I become best friend with the vacuum former. And <laughs> it's that machine in the back. <laughs> it's, you have to try it. It's amazing. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I produce some things that you will see there. So I'm not going to show you anything else from here. And I, I really want to thank the team of uh, Thinker Makerspace, uh, Stella, Marios, Stratis, Alex, Maria, and Kiriaki, and also my external collaborators, uh, Ilya Neofitu from Kusa Studio, um, uh, Marios Haralambus from, um, I forgot the name of the studio, <laughs> 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 Studio and Lab. And uh, Savas uh, Savulis, who helped me with the metal construction. I think that's all. Yeah. <laughs>